All right, Marta, thank you for joining us for Video Book Club. Thank you for coming. Um, and as you can see, we have a lot of different readers with us. But to get started, um, for some of them who haven't yet read um, your stories or gotten involved with your Amish romances, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you started writing? Okay, uh, I'd be glad to. And thanks so much for inviting me. I, I got really into that uh, whole game and uh, started thinking about the questions. I have to say, what I really in my heart of hearts want if I'm sick is my mother. <laughs> But she's been gone a long time now, so I'd probably settle for my daughters, who are usually pretty good about things like that. Oh, good. Okay. But I got into writing very early. I actually was a, I was a reader as soon as I could read. And um, I can remember very distinctly when I read my first Nancy Drew book. And that was the first time I realized that somebody actually wrote that story, you know, that that was a real job somebody could mm -hmm. have. And uh, so I thought, well, that's the kind of job I want to have. <laughs> and so it took a long time to get there, but it did eventually happen. Um, I spent a number of years writing um, short articles, short fiction, uh, Sunday school curriculum, just a, a lot of short things before I ventured into writing a novel. And, uh, and that took mm, several tries, yes, before, uh, before I stopped getting all those rejection slips and, uh, and finally found a home for myself first with uh, Love Inspired and then later on with Berkeley. And uh, so all these books later, I'm still going strong. Yeah, and so you do, um, write for the Love Inspire, but I think I saw you have a couple of other that you lines that you write. For instance, the sus romantic suspense, and then um, I forget the other one. What is what is the other line that you also write for? Um, Berkeley, I write for. Um, those are longer Amish books with really more about um, deeper in characterization than you're able to go with a, a Love Inspired, which is relatively short. And so they're two distinctly different stories. And, and I do enjoy that. I like switching off. And the same with the, uh, the romantic suspense that were published by HQN. I'm kind of cutting back a little bit now. Uh, I was doing three books a year. And I found that was getting to be a little bit much. So I'm cutting back to two books a year. And I'm finding it's nice to, to really focus in on the characters and, and you know, to have the time to do that. Yeah, so what drew you to, was it the Nancy Drew that drew you to doing suspense or, you know, what drew you to so there the suspense and the love inspired particularly? Oh yeah, one of my early editors, we discovered when we were talking about it that we, we had a similar uh, passion for, kinds of books that we read when we were young and you know the Nancy Drew was just the start but uh, uh, when I was reading a lot then uh, romantic suspense was very popular um, and so there were lots of authors who were producing the kinds of books that I like to read and uh, you may be too young to remember Mary Stewart and uh, and some of the other uh, well-known authors who did oftentimes very interesting settings, uh, Greek mm -hmm. Island or someplace in Europe. And that gave me the feeling of traveling as well as enjoying the, uh, the suspense and the mystery and the romance, of course. And uh, yeah. that, that really, I think the first couple of books that I wrote were actually um, um, more of a more of a romantic suspense, but uh, but they didn't get published, and so I uh, happened to be to learn about the um, love inspired line when it was first um, starting before the books even came out, and uh, I thought you know that's something that I think I would like, and so I did. Um, 
I did write my, I wrote my first book for them and submitted it and it's old and uh, it led me to another and another and another. <laughs> so I kept going. Yeah. And so the Love Inspired You're Right are shorter and you sort of have to be able to condense and tell that story in a much shorter way. So I'm curious, do they, when they first started, or I guess when you first started, did they tell you the type of story they wanted or did you get a chance to pitch what you tried to want to introduce? Um, well, back when they first started, I think they were really feeling their way as to what was the kind of story they wanted. You know, they're all the editors were all coming from other Harlequin lines uh, or silhouette lines. And so, you know, they were trying to figure out, you know, this is what makes a book popular in general romance. So what is it that's going to make it popular in inspirational romance? And so there was a lot of variety in those first, probably the first six months, at least, of the books. And then I think they found what really worked for their audience and kind of settled down into that. And it just happened to be something that fit very nicely with my style of writing. So I was really very fortunate. About that. Yeah, yeah. And so turning a little bit to the um, Amish stories. So what, I know you live in sort of Pennsylvania, Dutch County, but what drew you to decide to set your series and your love inspired and your suspense there? Well, I, I was writing a book in an existing series for, um, for Love Inspired, and um, the story was set in uh, Lancaster, in the Lancaster area in Pennsylvania, and, and I needed to bring in some uh, contractors to do some house remodeling, and it was very logical to have them be Amish, because that was, that's very common in that area on even up in our area. And um, so when I, when I turned the book in, my editor said to me, well, you know those Amish characters? We like that, do some more of that. So, and that was about the time that I was finishing the next book that suddenly Amish hit very hard and everybody was eager to have somebody who could write Amish and and, uh, you know, so I was already in place then, which was nice. Yeah, and speaking of sort of the Amish community, since you're sort of in, or at least closer to it than a lot, I'm curious, are there any sort of misconceptions about the Amish culture that you found in your writing career that you sort of had to, you know, debunk or explain? Mm, yeah, yeah. And I think, unfortunately, because so many people are trying to write them, you know, they're coming at it from from all sorts of different backgrounds, uh, maybe not not really understanding. Um, the, the most common thing I see in in a in a new author is the idea that that the um, Amish are very strict with their children, as far as who their children marry, and that they would disown, uh, you know, a child. I just ran across this the other day in a, uh, a write-up about a book somebody wanted me to comment on, and, and the idea that she would be shunned by the community if she married, didn't marry the person her father had picked out for her. And that's, that's really pretty far from real, from realistic. Um, Naturally, they want uh, that people want their children to marry within the religion. But uh, other than that, there are lots of opportunities for teenagers to meet each other, uh, enjoy each other's company, and find the right person for them. So, so yeah. this not it's not all that rigid in many ways. Right. Right. And, exactly. And also, it, it differs very much from one area to another. Um, in most of Pennsylvania, the Amish don't ride bicycles. In Ohio, the Amish ride bicycles. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's probably because their communities are spread out more. But, uh, you know, so it's necessary to have some options for getting around. But um, then in Pennsylvania, we of course have a lot of different uh, sex among, among the Amish. The, uh, the old order Amish, the new order Amish, the beachy Amish, the 
the uh, old order Mennonites and, you know, the German Baptists, <laughs> you name it, we have them in Pennsylvania. And, uh, and mainly because uh, William Penn decided that people should have religious freedom. And so uh, that is still reflected, I think, in Pennsylvania. Oh, interesting. And so turning to nursing her Amish neighbor, um, what inspired, which I think is also part of a series, so what inspired you to write this latest romance and what inspired the series overall? Um, well, the series, um, I had written three books set in this community and uh, the editors really wanted more. There was a lot that could be done in that community. And I like to, uh, you know, take somebody who was a minor character in a previous book and give them their story so so that suited me very nicely and i think um the impetus for this particular story um just came from thinking about um, the terrible after effects of accidents and um, how difficult it is when somebody's life has changed so abruptly in an accident uh, and and I was kind of mulling that over and thinking about, you know, hospitals and physical therapists and, and uh, rehabilitation and all that sort of thing. And that kind of led into uh, the story. Uh, now, she's not a nurse, <laughs> but the, uh, they like to use the, something about nursing in the title because that's something that a lot of readers like. And so... Uh, and so that's what happened with this from the nursing her. And that is what she does. She's kind of an, an aid to the physical therapist to, uh, in many, many ways, inspire him to take back his life and not just spend it sitting in a wheelchair, but, but doing something useful. Yeah, interesting. So is there another story in this series you want to tell? Or um, are you going to continue the series with another story? Um, I, I will be, yes, but in, in the meantime, what happened was that um, I was up for contract renewal with Berkeley, and they wanted me to do another three book series and wanted it to be about um, Amish holidays was what they initially said, and I'm thinking Amish going on holidays, that would be fun, <laughs> but no, that wasn't <laughs> what they meant. Um, they wanted a Christmas book first, and then an Easter book, and then a Thanksgiving book, and hopefully they'd be able to bring those out relatively quickly, and so um, that meant I needed to, I am contract, I have signed a contract for another three books in the Love Inspired series, but they're going to be on hold until I finish the uh, the rest of the, this holiday series. So the, the uh, first book is finished. It's called uh, Second Christmas. As um, you may not realize that Amish uh, uh, often, I mean, not, not all Amish and not always, celebrate uh, Christmas on December 25th. They also extend the celebration to the 26th. It's the equivalent of um, like Boxing Day in England, mm -hmm. and and uh, as a time for getting together with neighbors and you know people a little farther from your from your own family, and then there's also Old Christmas, which comes uh, January what seventh I think it is sixth or seventh, which was the uh, the original date before the calendar got changed, the day, and. Um, Several other other groups celebrate that as well, like the um, Greek Orthodox and Russian Orthodox. If you know anybody, they also celebrate Old Christmas, and um, so that's that gives people a lot of time to think about uh, what a nice what a nice Christmas. Yeah, Epiphany. Somebody says yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, having spent a lot of time in and. In church circles, I, I have, you know, the liturgical calendar is there in my mind. And that's, uh, that is something that, you know, where the Christmas season extends throughout. And so that was kind of fun to bring in second Christmas and, uh, and then the Easter one I'm writing now, and then I'll be doing the Thanksgiving. 
interesting. That's a nice, I guess, different way to do it was follow all the holidays. Yes. <laughs> So since also the love and spark are shorter, I'm curious about how you approach writing them or um, telling that story in that condensed way than you would your much longer um, Amish romances or the, the suspense ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting that it's, um, okay, yes, somebody's commenting that January 7th is Orthodox Christmas, yes, <laughs> because they do use the Gregorian calendar. Yeah, I had a lot of friends who were, um, who were Greek Orthodox when I was growing up, and, uh, and they celebrated them. Um, where was I? Uh, oh, I got me writing the love inspired yes. there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, but the differences between writing the stories really comes in on the planning. I, I if I know I'm going to be writing a. Uh, a love inspired, and I know it's going to be about 55,000 words, then I don't develop as many subplots to the story. Mm -hmm. There usually will be one or at least two subplots, so that keeping the focus much more on the main characters and their struggles, and, um, and just technically speaking, to um, think how many chapters am I going to write at how long will each chapter be? And and uh, I find after having done done a lot of them that that kind of comes pretty naturally once I start writing. I think, oh, this seems gone on long enough. Let's go, let's get through it. <laughs> and uh, the the other books, the Berkeley ones, are seventy five thousand words. So that's you know that's a considerable difference. And the nice thing about that is that it allows me to get into the characters much more deeply and develop the stories of some of the minor characters. Well. Yeah, and after I think, you know, writing a bunch of Love Inspired, do you still have to, or even the Berkeley ones, do you still have to plot or do can you just sort of start writing and have it inspire you as you go? Oh, no, no, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a plotter. And, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I admire people who can do that. I have one writer friend who, who actually writes whatever scenes come to her and then figures out afterwards how to string them together. <laughs> and that would have me climbing the walls, I'm afraid. Uh, I have my own little system for how I organize it. And uh, if I didn't do that, I would, I would never get a book finished, I don't think. <laughs> all we're right. all different. <laughs> yes, yes. I do admire the plotters because I myself a plotter in real life. So I understand where it comes from. <laughs> All right. So now to let readers learn a little bit more about you, we sort of have our, what we call our fresh fiction facts. So they're just quick questions to sort of get to know a little bit more about you. So you don't have to, you know, think long about them. So whatever comes to mind to sort of let us. But what is your favorite trope to read? I'm sorry, say again. What is, your favorite, a what is your favorite trope to read? Oh, um, I, like most people, love secret baby stories. There's just something about that that just uh, just comes into play. And I like Cinderella stories, but you can't really do that much in the Amish. So, so uh, <laughs> you know, they don't want a prince to come along. Um, and a lot of my stories deal with forgiveness, which isn't precisely a trope, but it's more of a a theme, but uh, I just find I keep coming back to that and forgiving the past. And so it's all usually about characters, two characters who had a past relationship or who knew each other in the past and, uh, and are just coming back to that again. Oh, cool. And you're a writer after my own heart. I love a good secret baby. I think they're yeah. awesome. <laughs> so do you have a favorite genre to read? Well, I, I discovered a long time ago that I can't read romance when I'm active, actually writing because mm -hmm. I feel like I'm influenced too much by whatever I'm currently reading. So I more often read mysteries. Uh, I like light mysteries. Uh, right now I'm reading the, uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with the Miss Seaton stories. They're, uh, oh. they're British. They're um, a fairly long series. 
and they're really humorous mysteries. You know, nothing gory, nothing that's going to give me nightmares <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just, uh, you know, a totally different style from any that I would be writing. So I feel safe reading something like that. And right now I'm reading my way through them and, uh, and enjoying it very much. Oh, that's good. Yes, I've heard of those. Those are nice. So what's your favorite time of day to write? Um, you know, really, I'm not, I'm not bound by the clock at all. Um, I'm, I usually end up doing, you know, I do certain things during the, during the morning and including reading the newspaper and, and, uh, and then I, and then I will start writing maybe around 1030 or 11, but it doesn't really matter to me if I don't finish what I want to do. I'll come back to it in the afternoon. I just try not to write too late in the day because uh, it's, I find it hard to, to concentrate as I get, you know, and you get tired mm -hmm. writing just like you do anything else. And, uh, and so, I, I, you know, earlier in the day is better for me. Cool. And then what's your favorite time to read? I read in the evenings usually. Um, uh, and I love my Kindle because of that. I know some people who, you know, they want to hold a book in their hands and, and I can understand that. But uh, I find when I'm reading in the evening, the backlit, you know, the Kindle lighting is just so much easier. And uh, so now that now that we all read online, it's uh, it's a lot easier to read into the evenings. And yeah. So my husband would be watching sports on television and I would be reading. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect goes. compromises. Yep, exactly. Yes. And so is there any new hobby or practice you've picked up recently or since the pandemic? Um, well, I've been doing more crocheting than I used to. Um, we have, a, I belong to a small group of uh, crocheters or knit and knitters. They're, they're both. And we started doing um, hats and scarves for um, children. Mm -hmm. There's a um, an agency in in uh, our community that um, actually administers the WIC program, the Women, Infants, Children's program, and and they really were very receptive to the idea of having uh, somebody contributing those. So we do them all year long and I just turn out one hat after another and <laughs> and then they go in uh, in the fall we take them down to to uh, the center of, and they just keep them displayed on the table all the time and you know put more out as they need them and any you know whenever a woman comes in with children she can pick out whatever she needs and kids of course lose their hats but yep. have accidents with them or so there's a constant demand and that's something I can do without really thinking about it much but I enjoy doing that. That's really interesting. So how long does it take well they're child size so they're probably smaller but how long does it take to knit a whole cap or a hat? Oh well the I, I do crocheting some people yeah. do knitting I don't know if it's faster or crochet. shorter but uh, there might be some knitters among you but uh you know, you can, I can crochet a hat pretty much in an evening if I kept at it. I don't usually, I'll take several days to do one. And uh, I just do the sizes according to what they tell me they need. Uh, last year it was, oh, we need for older kids. We don't have, we aren't getting enough for older kids to older kids. So I did, was doing bigger ones. But this fall, they said they need a lot of, of for like elementary age children. So that's and they're having they're having cold and snowy weather in Pennsylvania, so uh, I know that that the hats will be welcome. <laughs> That's so interesting. That's cool. So, what is your favorite writing fuel? Uh, cups of tea, many many cups of tea, uh, following one after the other. Usually Earl Grey. This is my love inspired cup that uh, love inspired sent to all of our all of their writers this year. And I didn't get mine until we came back to South Carolina for the winter because it got sent here. But imagine my surprise when we arrived and I found my cup was here. So that's that's nice. I love that bug. Cute. Okay. So what would you what do you do to celebrate a new release? Um, 
not a whole lot. <laughs> uh, you know, you get busy with the with the next book and with some promotion involved in the, the book that's releasing. Um, but as far as actually celebrating, I've had too many books come out to, I think, convince my husband that I'm, he's watching me, that I'm, uh, uh, that I deserve to go out to dinner after everyone that comes out. So, uh, um, so especially with COVID, that's sort of um, mm -hmm. put a halt to some of our more casual uh, going out. Yeah, around. yeah, yeah, definitely. So how do you get past sort of, um, a bad writing day. So if you happen to have a bad scene that you're writing or you can't get past that scene, how do you sort of push yourself past that? Well, I don't, I find sometimes if a scene is not going well, it's probably because I don't have a clear vision of where I want it to go. So I'll go back and think about it and try and you know isolate what the problem is. But if that doesn't work, the best thing for me to do is to just go away from it entirely, take a walk, um, do something else, uh, work a jigsaw puzzle, do something that takes my mind off it. And then usually when I come back to it, I'll find that my subconscious has been working away while I was doing <laughs> something else and that the, the scene is there. So I'm, then I'm ready to write. Oh, good. Yes. And then to sort of bring this back to uh, us answering what we'll be reading, listening, and watching, or is there anything you would recommend that you're reading, watching, or listening to lately? Um, I've been watching, I just started watching um, the new series, Ghosts. I don't know if anybody's run across that. I don't, I don't know why I didn't catch it when it first started, but then I noticed that it, I thought I could stream it. And so I watched it and I think it's, I think it's funny. And that half hour length is just right when I sit down for lunch and I can watch it and I, and I enjoy it like that. Yes, yes. So you're watching the American version. Did you see? know that there's also a British version? Well, British yeah, version? I just recently heard that there was a British version of it too. Now I'm watching the American, which happens to be what popped up as, as uh, I don't know, in the streaming channels that we had. Uh, and, that's, and, and that's funny. It is, it's very cute. <laughs> Is there anything re that you've read recently that you would recommend? Um, I, we, I read, well, I've been a more serious thing. Um, I read and, and we're discussing a book called Just Mercy, which was about um, some of the terrible uh, miscarriages of justice throughout the years in, um, in court trials, in uh, cases that needed to be brought back to, uh, to find justice again. Uh, it was a fascinating book, maybe especially so for me because my daughter-in-law is an attorney and she represents uh, cases of death penalty appeals or life in prison, that be the one, sure. but they, um, she and her partner, you know, they've both had a wide range of experience, but that's what she's doing now. And it involves a great deal of time and work. And I just, um, I really admire that. And it's, uh, and it, it interested me to read about this other character, this man who had, had found his career took a sharp right turn because he wasn't going to um, become a, fancy New York City attorney after all, he was going to spend his time working for a nonprofit and helping the people who really hadn't had it well. Oh, so interesting. I'll have to like add that one to my list. All right, before we turn this over to our reader questions, um, where can readers find out more about you and get in touch with you? Oh, thank you. That's a, always an appropriate question, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, my website is martaperry.com, and I also am on Facebook, um, facebook.com slash martaperrybooks, and if you write to me, I'll answer, and if you would like to have a bookmark or my brochure of Pennsylvania Dutch recipes, I'd be happy to send to you, and uh, I 
you know, I hear a lot from, from readers and I really enjoy it. It's kind of a bright spot in the day if I've been working hard writing and I open my email and discover that somebody says, I really love your books and kind of uh, gives you the fuel to keep on going. So. Yeah. <laughs> Better than nice, the nice emails and not the, yes, you yes, should write about this. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you get some of that too. But. Yeah, exactly. All the time. Alrighty, so now we're going to end the recording part portion of our interview.